Hey guys, I am back and it is 2023, which means it's time to answer the most important question of the year, which is how do I get clients on LinkedIn? Now the answer lies within social selling and if that's something that you're not doing yet, you should be and I'm here to show you how. Now as your favorite and consistently uploading LinkedIn niche YouTube influencer, I have gone ahead and prepared basically a resource, the only video that you're gonna need to watch this year when it comes to your LinkedIn strategy. Now if that wasn't already enough, I also have a late Christmas present, which is the form of a free resource. And on top of that, at the very end, I'm gonna tell you what you can do if you want the chance to win a free one-to-one -one private coaching session when it comes to your LinkedIn lead gen. Oh, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're feeling generous. It boosts my ego and it makes me feel good about uploading more YouTube videos because I have been a little bit inconsistent and I'm sorry about that. Now, without further ado, let me introduce the thoroughly constructed and very advanced LinkedIn strategy that we're gonna be going over in today's video. Now, there are gonna be three different pillars that we're gonna be going over today. And these three pillars are actually exactly the same pillars that I used to structure my high ticket program as well. Now, I can't give you like all of the secrets because otherwise people that pay for it would be upset. However, I think this is like, it's going to be good enough for you to get on the way with it or take it to the next level if you've already been focusing a little bit on LinkedIn for your lead gen. So pillar number one is inbound, pillar number two is going to be outbound and pillar number three is going to be scale. Within inbound, these are the most important things that you need to cover before you move on to the next section. So positioning, you need to create your avatar. I have said this in probably like 80% of my videos. If you don't know who you're looking for, how can you know how to create your profile, what to post, what to message? Like it all starts with your avatar and your offer. So with your avatar, I've actually put this in the end in the form of an action step. We'll answer those questions afterwards, but create your avatar. Second is offer creation. What are you going to offer as a service? Are you going to do done for you, like where you're going to be running somebody's accounts or you're going to be doing done with you or like consulting advisory like I do. How much you're going to be charging? Do you have a monthly fee? Do you have an hourly rate? And what does the delivery look like? So I just covered that, like done for you, done with you, um, consulting one-to-one -one stuff. Next, you need to construct a LinkedIn profile better than any of your competitors because we're all winners on this channel. So we need to create the best profiles ever. I have done a video purely on profile optimization. I'll probably do a 2023 updated one because surprisingly enough, there's just new things that keep on happening every year, which are gonna help you take your profile to the next level. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on LinkedIn profiles for 2023 construct your LinkedIn profile. Okay, then we have content. So ideally you want to have three pillars. Some people have more, but I think it's actually better to stay more niche and have people associate a few things just with you and your account and your content. So three topics that you want people to associate with you. For example, with me, the three things I mainly speak about unless I go on a tangent is LinkedIn lead generation, sales navigator, and social selling. Another example would be if you're a sales director, you could do sales best practices, um, how to cultivate relationships with your customers and also leadership. So how you motivate and lead and manage your team so that they hit KPIs and targets and stuff. I would recommend using a content planner. I feel like a hypocrite right now because I'm so bad at being consistent with this. However, it just helps so much. And if you don't have a like, maybe you use like Notion or like something fancy, if you don't have anything like that, it doesn't matter. You can literally create something in Google Sheets, Excel, Anywhere that you can create a database if you're using like Notion or Monday and that kind of stuff, just create a place where you have the days of the week for a 30 day period, what you're gonna post and maybe a link to the folder that has the video or the written post in it. I have a few tips here. So tip number one, aim to post at least twice per week. I know if I said like five times a week, people might get overwhelmed or do it for one week and then they just fall off and never do it again. It's better to be consistent and post less, set the bar too high and then not reach it at all. Tip number two is video gets the most engagement. I speak with so many people and they seem to be terrified of filming video. It is scary. I still get scared and it's been like five years I've been in front of a camera. Just try it. I think it's something that a lot of people say I'm not good at, but how do you know if you're not good at it if you don't try and develop the skill? It's the same with anything. If you've never played tennis before, you're not gonna play like Djokovic the first time you play. So just try and film, practice. It doesn't mean you need to upload it straight away, but the best thing with filming stuff is that it's not gonna be live when you're doing it. So you can film it, 
you can look at it and be like, that sucks, I'm not gonna post it. And it's fine, no one has to see it. But video just gets more engagement than written posts. I would recommend you try and develop the skill, post some videos, post some written content, maybe test out a few different formats and see which one gets the most engagement from your audience. Tip number three, Okay, this is actually, this is important. So use the number of comments that your post gets as the main metric for overall performance. So a lot of people will just look at reach, so how many views the post has got. Lots of people just look at likes. I would say that comments are actually more important. And with a few updates in the LinkedIn algorithm, they LinkedIn can actually check to see. So if I create a post and somebody sees my post in their main feed, and they have their mouse over the post and they're reading it and then maybe they go to my profile to look at me then they come back and maybe they like it and they leave a comment linkedin actually sees that time that that person's hovered and thinks okay this person didn't just scroll past this post so it's something that they're interested in if a lot of people hover linkedin is going to know that they're most likely reading it if a lot of people hover then they go to my profile that's being marked as higher up in terms of quality and relevance in the linkedin algorithm for content so comments you want people to comment you want people to engage how can you do that put a post that's either that's like evoking a strong emotion it could be a big celebration and people are going to comment saying congratulations or well done which is a very typical linkedin thing another thing could be asking a question so maybe you're putting your thoughts out about a topic and then you're saying what are your thoughts on this or do you think this is better than this thing like video or written posts you could do a poll like do something that when people read it, there's a call to action or there's a strong feeling that they want to engage with that post. Okay, action steps, need to remember to breathe. Answer these questions. So these are for the content like positioning when it comes to your avatar and knowing what you're gonna be speaking about when you plan your content. I've not included all of the, I have like a, a document that my clients fill out with loads of questions. I've just taken some of the most important ones and put them in here. So first one is what industry does your ideal prospect belong to? Second, where is your ideal prospect located? Third, company headcount. Fourth is what language they speak. These are all things that you can select within Sales Navigator if you use it. So you can go and basically fill out all these boxes. So that's a good way to figure out your avatar if you have Sales Nav. Five, what is the typical seniority level? So are they like an owner, a founder, um, a co-founder, a manager, a director? sales associate, whatever. Six, what function would your ideal prospect carry out? So what department are they in? Uh, seven, find five of your ideal prospects on LinkedIn. This is really good if you're having writer's block with your LinkedIn profile. So a lot of people, they fill out all these resources and they have all the answers. And then as, as soon as it comes to translating that and packaging it into their profile, they just freeze and they just don't know how to write it. Use inspiration. Do not copy, don't go to someone's profile and just could like copy paste it but go and have a look find a few different profiles see what you like about their profiles see how they've structured it in terms of like the paragraphs particular like language that they're using keywords all of that stuff and then use that to take the bits that you like and create your own kind of more original post then we have number eight so what are the biggest challenges your ideal client faces nine has your ideal client tried other things in the past that have failed this is information that you could use in two ways. Either number one, you could actually write that in copy and say, have you tried X, Y, Z in the past and it hasn't worked? Question mark. If so, and then you insert your service or like why that's a better alternative. And then also it's good information to have for your sales call as well. So if you see that your ideal clients typically have all tried Facebook ads in the past and been banned, or they've always typically tried um, working with a freelancer and it didn't work and you're a big agency, find out what they might have tried in the past, why it didn't work. And then when you're on your sales call, you can use that as leverage or a way to investigate that part of the career, like what happened during that part, why did it not work and use it to reassure them why this is the better option for them to choose. 10, what is the most common outcome your ideal client wants to achieve? Wants to achieve? So more leads, increased brand awareness, more job applications, etc. And then the final question is list your three content pillars below. So choose the three things that you wanna speak about here. Now, instead of this being just another YouTube video that you clicked on, watched, and then forgot about, I'm gonna give you something to make implementing everything that we have learned so far a little easier. Whether you are new to social selling or a LinkedIn lead generation expert, I'm gonna be leaving a 23 page guide 
in the description and also pinned in the comments that contains 37 tips on how to do social selling on LinkedIn. This guide has been created by HubSpot who are kindly sponsoring this section of the video. All you need to do to grab it is click on the link in the description or the comments enter your email and they will send it straight to your inbox completely for free. Inside the guide, you'll find tips on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, build relationships effectively, some sales navigator hacks even I hadn't heard of, and my favorite section at the end called Pro Tips, which has seven pointers to put you ahead of the competition. Right, moving on to pillar number two, which is outbound. The first thing is prospecting. So I would say if you are looking to take lead generation seriously or you're part of a big team um, like of sales reps, you probably have Sales Navigator, but if you don't, it's something that I would recommend exploring. Use all of the answers from pillar one to create lists of your ideal clients. So for example, if I go onto LinkedIn Sales Nav, what I can do here is go on lead filters and say, for example, we chose a headcount of 51 to 200, I can put that in there. Let's say I want them to be based in New York, US, put that there. Industry, let's say I want people in financial services, include, and then profile language, English, function. And we can actually see up here how many results we have. So we're currently still on 6,000. I'd like to bring that a little bit smaller so maybe we do seniority level and we do directors and that brings us down to under a thousand so now we have 856 results and what we can do from this is select these people this only selects the page that you're on so it doesn't select all 856 results it just selects 25 but you can select this whole page or go down the page and click the profiles that you would like to save save them to a list and then you can give that list a relevant name or alternatively slash and you can save this search. I've got, I've already reached my limit of 50, but you could save the search and give it a name and then come back to the saved search whenever you want. And there'll be new leads that keep on being added to it, X, Y, Z. So yeah, that's a great thing to do in terms of prospecting. Sales Navigator also acts a little bit like a CRM as well. So it makes it a lot easier for you to track and manage all of your leads. However, if you are on one of the more advanced Sales Navigator tiers, you're gonna be able to use the Snap integrations, which is like a Sales Nav feature that allows you to integrate with different like apps and your CRMs and stuff. So if you're using like Salesforce, you can directly integrate Salesforce with your Sales Navigator plan and have more of like a seamless flow of uh, prospecting, saving, reaching out to people and tracking that flow from A to Z. If you are a solo business owner or maybe you're just not part of a huge company and you don't have a need to get one of these like advanced tiers and use the CRM integrations, then same thing with the content planner. You can just use Google Sheets, Excel, anything with a database and use that to create a basic flow of leads from connection request sent, yes or no. Have you sent them like a welcome message or have you engaged with them? Have you booked a time to speak? Have you had the meeting? Did they close or not? Like you can build out a really basic pipeline and just use that to track until it makes sense for you to invest the money and get one of the higher paid tiers. Next in pillar two for outbound is network hacking. Now this is one of my favorite little tricks for people to use. When I say the word hacking, it's nothing illegal, so don't panic. It is literally just being smart about who you interact with and the eyeballs that you can get in front of. So network hacking essentially enables you to get in front of hundreds of thousands of people, even if you have one follower yourself, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it. So step one is you want to write down the keywords that are associated with people who you want to be like. So for example, if I was new and I wanted to offer LinkedIn lead generation services. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and find some other people that are offering the service that I want to offer, but they're already well established and they also have a follower base. You want to try and find, find people that have a large number of followers, but also have good engagement. So they could be like mid tier follower count if they've got maybe like 20, 30, 40,000. But if their engagement is really good, then that's still worth putting on your list. And also make sure that they're posting at least at least like two to three times per week, ideally more, but say like two times minimum. Once you've written down those keywords, you want to go and find 
the accounts that match this. And what I've actually done is created a folder on my bookmarks bar called LinkedIn Influencers. And then I've just bookmarked a bunch of profiles of the people that I found. So whenever you go onto like Safari or Chrome or whatever search engine you use, you can just go onto that folder and open up your bookmarks, like the little saved profile URLs in different tabs and go and check their content. Step three is once you've added them onto the folder, you want to go and check every day to see if there's a new post. Another thing that you could do to take this a step further, which I've done as well, is actually connecting with some of the influencers on your list. And what you could put in the connection request is say, hey, add their name. I love your content. I would love to make sure I'm seeing it as soon as you're posting. Would you mind me asking what days and times you post? So I can like set a reminder to come and like engage with what you're, what you're putting out there. Most of the time, if I got sent a message like that, not that I'm like a big influencer, but if somebody sent me a message saying, hey, I love your content, I wanna know when you post, I'm likely to accept and respond to them because it's like a kind thing. You're not even asking them for a favor, you're just saying, hey, I love your content. Can you let me know when you post so I can make sure that I'm there and I'm one of like the first commenters. And then what you do when that happens is you want to leave a comment that does the following things. Acknowledges, compliments, reflects and then questions so what do i mean by this when i say acknowledge you want to say great post or say something that you liked about the post itself and why you liked it so if i saw a post and i was like um awesome post acknowledging i love the part when you said insert like a quote from their own post as an example that's me acknowledging and it's also complimenting them because people love to be complimented then reflect so you could say I have found that and then your own personal experience and then question something to get them to respond back to you or to further the conversation. So you're saying, love your post, love when you said this, I've seen that, this, what do you think about this? And you're basically leaving a comment, complimenting them, engaging with them and then saying, can you engage back with me? And what that is going to do is if the author so the person who published the post re-engages with your comment, so if they like it or leave a comment, that's actually going to push your comment towards the top of the post. So if this person receives, um, say, like 20,000 likes or let's say like a thousand likes every time they post, it's going to be likely that if there's lots of comments, yours could get lost amongst the comments very easily. However, if you're scrolling on a home feed, you might have noticed that when there is a post with a lot of engagement, there'll always be a few comments that are towards the top and they are the ones that are pinned by the author. Or that the author has engaged with. So you're making it more likely for the author to see it because you're asking them a question, they're more likely to respond. Hopefully you're one of the first commenters because we know what time they post at or we're checking every day. So it's more likely they're gonna see it because they want to engage within the first hour or so. That's how most people do it. And then also it means that anybody else in their audience that sees this post, they're gonna be seeing your comment as well. So the exposure that the post gets is gonna be hopefully close to the exposure that your comment gets. And if that audience is your ideal audience or there's an overlap, you're gonna get a bunch of inbound connection requests or people being like, oh, this person seems interesting. I just learned something from them. I'm gonna go connect with them. I've done this and on some of the posts where I've been like a first commenter and had like back and forth with the author, I've received up to like 20 to 30 inbound connection requests. So this is a really good way if you're new to LinkedIn or you just wanna grow your network and get more reach and more eyeballs, more engagement, more inbound. Chef's kiss is such a good way. I'll show you quickly uh, something that I use. It's really simple. So you could just like replicate this. Identify your keywords, identify your thought leaders, your ideal client criteria. Create something like this on Google Sheets or whatever and use it to track and then create a folder and you are good to go. Now, the most important thing that top sellers are gonna be focusing on in 2023 is social selling. And this is something that is the philosophy of everything that I teach to my clients, whether it's the founder of a tech startup or a sales director inside an 1,000 plus employee enterprise, it all comes down to social selling. So even if you only do half of the things inside the guide, you're already gonna be miles ahead of the majority of LinkedIn users. So make sure that you go and download that guide as well as complete all of the action steps as soon as you finish this video. Now, the last thing I want to cover inside pillar two for outbound is multi-channel marketing. So this is combining different platforms as part of your overall marketing approach. For example, I'll use myself as a case study. I primarily use LinkedIn and YouTube for the platforms where I post my content. I'll tell you why. If I put in 
all this effort, like this thoroughly researched plan that I've done for you guys today, and I have this long video, I'm not sure how long this is gonna be, maybe like 20, 30 minutes. I might as well make the most out of this content and repurpose it as, pu repurpose it as much as possible. I could, for example, cut this video up and take loads of little mini uh, bites of it in vertical format and post it to TikTok, for example. I could take one minute segments of the video and post it on LinkedIn, accompanied by a written caption. I could transcribe this video and take all of the, I think a good transcription service is otter.ai, I think. I could transcribe this video and then use that text to create tweets, like, yeah, tweets. I don't use Twitter. To create tweets or to create written posts that I kind of just like re-edit it a little bit and then just do written posts on LinkedIn. Um, you could do the stuff that you use on TikTok for, like the videos on TikTok. You could also do Instagram reels. Like you could basically use it for everything. However, I would maybe just choose, if you don't have a manager, two platforms that you want to post on and try and create content ahead of time. So bulk create, bulk edit, and then just schedule it inside your planner for which platforms you want to put it on, on which days and have it all ready and prepared. So that is the end of pillar two. Pillar three is scale. So this is not going to apply to everybody, but if you're already, you've already implemented everything that we've spoken about in this video, and you want to take things to the next level, you need to make sure, sure that you're using a CRM. I would al already recommend this, but if you want to take it seriously and maybe you're part of like a big team or something, make sure that you're using professional CRM. You can use like any of them, Salesforce, HubSpot. I've used Notion in the past, like manually, uh, Pipedrive, Zoho. I don't know how many more there are, but use a CRM make sure that you're using one, um, especially because it's going to be important once you're trying to keep a track of loads of different leads. It's going to be too difficult to do that just by memory and like checking your inbox. So that's CRM. The second is hiring a virtual assistant. So this is more so when it gets too difficult for you to manage it, or maybe you have the extra budget that you can assign to hiring a VA, hire somebody to help you manage. And it doesn't necessarily have to be all of the outreach. You might want to do that yourself because you're the best person who's like going to be able to speak about your business or your service or your offer, but it just could be organizational. It could be leaving the high value comments on for your like networking, uh, network hacking approach. So leaving those comments on influencer posts, it could be helping you manage your CRM. It could be posting your content on your behalf, according to your content schedule. A VA just helps everything. And then the third thing is actually doing the work. So. I know that sounds basic, but honestly, you just need to do the work and you need to be consistent. There's no point in watching videos like this because I used to be this person. You watch all these videos, they tell you what to do, they give you everything you need to succeed. If you don't implement it, what's the point? All of this stuff is the foundation of what I teach people who pay me a decent amount of money and it's here for free. So just make sure that you take this, you download the guide, you follow all of the steps. I'll also add the link to this Google Doc as well. I'll put it all in the description, put it all in the comments and just make sure that you do the work. And feel free to tag me in your posts if you upload on LinkedIn and I'll come and support you as well. Now, I have one thing, one last thing I want you to do and that's what I mentioned at the beginning of the video which was an extra gift opportunity to win a one-to-one -one call with me. I want you to leave a comment saying social selling in the comments beneath this video within the next 48 hours from when I've uploaded it. And I'm gonna pick somebody at random to do a one-to-one -one 60 minute LinkedIn session. We can go over anything you want to. I would say try and complete everything from today and I can help you take it like to the next level, maybe any other questions that you have. But yeah, so leave a comment saying social selling. That is a wrap. Thank you if you've stayed to the end of this video. Remember to hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.